Davis receiving. Yes, dangerous. I'm on the suspects now. Looks like they're just about to do the business. What's the chance of some backup? I'll see what I can do. But you might be unlucky. Everyone's at it this morning. <sighs> Cheers. Please, come on, you're nicked. in White Ford Transit. Registration number X-ray 254, Foxtrot Echo Lima. Heading in the direction of Upper Street. Intercept. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being in possession of stolen goods. That is, artifacts of a religious nature stolen from St. Friedwhite's church. And frankly, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You can have a go. It may harm your defence. If you do not mention, if you do not mention, why is it again? This is really going to screw me up. You should behave yourself then, shouldn't you? No, I mean my leg. Like, we've got a big match on Sunday. Can I say something dangerous? Do you want to make a statement? No, don't call me dangerous. No, I just want to say, I've always found you very fair. I mean, no verbals, no violence, no racial abuse. Frankly, it's a pleasure to get arrested by you. I mean, some of your associates... Warren, shut up. This car isn't short for business use, I trust. Requiring your usual solicitor? Yes, definitely. And the doctor. He hurt his leg. You must have noticed me limping. I'm not paid to notice things, son. I need to fill in forms. 42. There you go. No, no, not charcoal. Charcoal's my unlucky colour. I was wearing charcoal the day I got married. How about this, sir? No, no, not herringbone. Herringbone brings out my eczema. What's this, sir? Unclaimed property dangerous. Not your style. Got your man, then? I did, yeah. Top gun, eh, Sarge? Yeah, we'll all sleep easier now that you've collared the Mr. Big of organised crime, eh, Dangerous? Very good. Don't go down any dark alleys on your way home, though, eh, Dangerous? I hear his mum can be really nasty. Davies! Think about there's one N in Armani. One N and two M's, right? Yes, sir. What are you up to? I'm just doing the paperwork on the church job. James Edward Ramscar, age 47. Very naughty boy until he slung his hook four years ago. Bought a castle in Spain. Surprise, surprise. 
I thought we'd seen the last of him, but apparently he's back and in business. Apparently? Well, some off-duty couple was sitting near Ram's car and a young woman, who certainly was a Mrs R, in the clubhouse of the Torrequid Barda Golf Club. Seems she's giving him GBH of the eardrum about what a terrible life he leads her, how she needs to plan her future, about him not being the man she thought he was, etc, etc. All that stuff that makes a bloke really glad to be a red-blooded heterosexual. Then she says to him, which is what this is all about, when are you going to go back to London and get that job done? And he says, well, calm down, not so loud. You can't rush these things. There's a lot of setting up to do. A week later, he's gone and the silly buggers have lost him. So what I've been asked to do by the man with a pinstripe brain upstairs is to have one of my officers have a nose around and see if he can find out if Ram's car is here and if indeed he is, what he's up to. Which, to my mind, is a complete waste of time. I see. You see what? It's a waste of time, so you're putting me on it, because in your opinion, I'm a waste of time. You're keen, I'll give you that. That is what you're saying, isn't it, Gov? Given a perfect world, with a perfect police station and a perfect criminal investigation department, I have to be honest, no, you wouldn't be in it. You'd be going around schools in a nice blue uniform, handing out smarties and indicating vulnerable points of entry. But as it is... Have a word with Bernard Norris. He used to run with Ram's car and he owes me one. Oh, and if you have to do any travelling, use public transport. skills? No. Well, yes, I am, in a way. James Ramscar. Jimmy Ramscar. <laughs> Last I heard, he was in Spain. What about him? There's some talk about him being back here. I doubt it. Not after that last trouble. You've not heard anything, then? About what? About the possibility of him being up to something. Oh. You really think I'd know, dear? We all know something, Mr. Norris. Let me explain to you, Detective Constable, whatever your name is. Most of my days are filled with a bit of this and a bit of that. Not very inspiring, you might say, but it's straight. All that other stuff's behind me. Not because straight's more appealing, but I just don't have the energy anymore. And what was I anyway? I took me ain't little chancer, running errands for the big boys, and not quite sitting at the same table. So you tell your governor, if I hear anything, I shall happily return past favours. Davis. DC Davis. Thanks for your time. Do you know, I've got school certificate. What a waste. What a bloody waste. All right, if I join you. Of course it is. Sit yourself down. Not long now, eh, Raymond? Just under the month. Thirty years. I can't believe it. What will you do? Anything lined up? No, no. More time down the allotment, I suppose. That's about it. Still, something you like. Something you're good at, they tell me. Oh, yeah, I love it. It's been a godsend. <laughs> we did talk about doing a trip or something, you know, the Far East or the Pacific Islands or somewhere, but Maggie having to be so careful, you know. Yeah. Must be hard. Oh, you get used to it. I need to plan so carefully just in case anything, you know. Not that it's her fault, the poor love. Constant pain isn't something you wish on yourself, is it? No, no, it isn't. Davis. Oh, yeah, hello. No, no, that's fine. I haven't got anything on. What time would you like me to collect him? Make it half past? OK. OK, see you then. Bye. Bye. How about you? Sorting yourself out? The job or the domestic? The job's the job. 
Still living in digs? Yeah, and still waiting for the divorce to come through. That was her just now, Julie. You still got a relationship then? Yeah, we've still got a relationship. Hi. You sure you don't mind? Of course I don't mind. Where is he? Playing in the garden. Come in. Go on through, silly. So? It's just I've got this friend coming over. It's all very last minute. No, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Pity you can't have him for the weekend. Still, when you get a place of your own, maybe. Nice to know someone loves you. Oh, hold on, you haven't got a scoop. How would you like him back? What, half nine? There he is now. He's with Lufthansa, just popping in on route to Stuttgart. Anyway, thanks, Dangerous. You're a good friend. Always were. Pity you were such a lousy husband. Thanks a lot now. Bad. You? Yeah, all right. Is that a new one? Yeah, I started this morning. It's not much of it, is it? Maybe not much to you, but to me it's ten quid a week. <laughs> That's about what? Could announce. Actually, I'm on the verge of regular employment. A proper job? Don't believe it. I didn't say a proper job, I said regular employment. Besides. Besides what? Don't interrupt, I'm thinking. Right. You're not a happy man, I take it. Oh, I don't know, Mod. It's the job, the attitude. I don't fit anymore. So all I get are the droppings, the stuff no one else wants to bother with. It can't all be major crime, dangerous. Little things still happen, still concern people, still need to be taken care of. Yeah, I know, I know. The trouble is, you're out of your time. Is that right? You're a decent man in an indecent world, kind even when drunk. Thank you. You need to harbour more suspicion, cultivate a little bit more cunning. I'll tell you this, elated or depressed, you're a lovely drinker, Dangerous. Tell me about this new job of yours. Well, tomorrow morning, I start work as a social survey interviewer employed by the British Social Research Unit. What about the dog walking? That might have to stop. What about the teaching English to Japanese au pairs? That I can reschedule. <laughs> what exactly will you be surveying? Well, my first assignment is a study of the sexual behaviour and attitudes of local residents over the age of 65. Round here? Hence the word local. What are you going to do? Just knock on the door and ask them? <laughs> I'm not going to just knock on the door. Of course I'm not. Well, not cold, anyway. They'll all have been informed that an interview is coming on behalf of the Kilburn Health Authority. Oh, well, that should do the trick. Oh, 
Morning, Raymond. Morning, Dangerous. Oh, got a package for you. What's this? Sir? A tin of biscuits. Biscuits? An old dear called Mrs. Mellish left them for you. Right. Right. Say, thank you for being so nice to her. Right. Being nice to someone's funny, is it, Sarge? Am I laughing? Am I laughing? She's a nervous little old lady living on her own, 200 feet up in the air. What was I supposed to do, ignore her? Something like that, yeah. She just wants a bit of attention. Then let her go to A&E. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Raymond. What's he doing in this job? Dangerous? He's all right. What's the bet he packs it in? You never know. He might surprise a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. And Chelsea might win the league. I see you walking that dog of yours yesterday. You probably did, yeah. I thought she had custody of the dog. I take him out. I enjoy it. Yeah, I can tell. Besides, he's too much for her to handle. Oh, I don't know. I heard she can handle anything. No offence. How can I take offence at you, Darren? What'd you fancy then? Well, uh, how about that new place? Sounds good. We'll be over at that new place, Dangerous, if you fancy joining us. Right then, Mr. Ramsker, what have we got? What's this then? Statement by James Edward Ramsker, reference missing believe dead. Missing believe dead? Celia Norris, August the 13th, 1982. Norris? Mr. Norris? On the night in question, I was at a hotel in Newmarket, having been at the races all day, as witnesses will testify. I knew Celia Norris because of my associations with her father, but I had not spoken to her for the week preceding her disappearance. Bernard Norris was with me at the races all day. You were here in 1982, weren't you, Ralph? When wasn't I here? Why? There was this girl went missing. August something. Celia Norris. Can you remember anything about it? Celia Norris? Yeah. 1982? Blimey, dangerous. What's all this about? I've been looking up the file on James Ramscar. Jimmy Ramscar? That's a name from the past. Yeah. Something's come up. Probably nothing. Anyway, I was looking in his file and see he made this statement about this girl, this Celia Norris, when she went missing. Wondered if you remembered anything. Yes, I remember. Not that much, mind. She was, what, 17, went out for the night, never seen again. Did we treat it as murder? Not at first, no. She'd gone off before and her parents didn't seem that much concerned. Then, as I remember, a few days later, some of her clothing turned up. The clothes she wore that night. That hardened things up, but it all came to nothing. So, what's this then? Looking to make a name for yourself, eh? I wish. No, just interested, that's all. General Registry, please. Hello, they're DC Davis, Wilston North. Is it? Sorry about that. Still, I just caught you. I'd like the file on Celia Norris, missing believed dead, August 1982. 1982, yeah. No, Norris, N for nobody. That's great. Oh, and could you mark it for my personal attention? Cheers. Sorry, just can you show me something for me there, Ken? Yeah, here you go. Cheers. I like this shirt. That star's coming back, you know. Is it really? Well, well. Tell you what, Dame, just if you do find him, ho ho. I think we have got it, will ya? Okay. 
didn't expect to see you. Huh? So, how goes it? You've been up to something. I've got myself a murder. They've given you a murder? No, they didn't give it to me. I sort of appropriated it. You what? I'm not going to tell them about it. Every day I think of you. I think At four o'clock in the you. afternoon, she'd gone to the youth employment office to inquire about the possibilities of being a nurse. She went home, had a tea, had a bath, and went out for the evening to this club, a local place she went every week, mostly with this boyfriend, name of William Lynn. She and Lynn had a bit of a barney, and she and another girl, Roxanne Palmer, went off for a car ride with a bloke named David Burridge. They dropped her back in town around half eleven. Here, on this corner. Apparently there was some sort of row, and Celia wanted to get out and walk, which she did. It's the last time she was seen. You see... If you're going to use me as some sort of uh, unpaid consultant, I'd rather you arrange your investigations outside drinking hours. <laughs> um, and if you don't mind me saying so, I don't know how you can find any clues lying around 20 years after the event. It's not clues, it's the geography I want to have a look at. A week after she disappeared, some of the clothes she was wearing were found down here on the towpath. A dog dragged them out. They were stuffed down behind the bushes. It was a lot more overgrown in those days. Would you have come this way? Would have been a possible shortcut home. Anyway, CID got a tip and pulled a bloke called Andrew Parsons, an own user of ladies' clothing. He admitted he'd handled the clothing, but said he'd found it. Couldn't remember when, but thinks it was the 16th, three days after the girl went missing. When the papers put out a description of what she was wearing, he said he panicked and dumped the stuff back here where he found it. They questioned him for two days and then let him go. Oh. Oh. God, nearly dumped my back there. Sorry about that, fellas. What's it all about? I've been doing my allotment and silly sod, I left the key to the gate in my other pocket so I had to climb in and out over the fence. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm a fanatic, you understand? All right. Can yeah. I have a look in the set? You think I'm a thief? Well. What about you two? What about us two what? <laughs> I see your sort all the time. What sort? Consenting adults under the canal bridge. How dare you? I was once nearly engaged to Miss Galway Bay. <laughs> Can I have a look in the set? Go on then, have a look. Vegetables, right? Sorry about that. Just doing your duty as a citizen. Quite right and all, brother. Don't you brother me? Evening. He could still have been a thief. Yeah, I know. Since you're on a murder inquiry, you're not bothered. I'm not a bag of carrots and onions. I'm not, no. By God, you've changed, Dangerous. That's me. A changed man. Looking for a Mr. or Mrs. Norris. We don't live here anymore. Who are you? DC Davis, <laughs> Wilsdon North. Who is it? It's alright, Mum. Nothing. What's it about? I know I've got to go to work. It's um. Who are you? Josie. Uh, and your. And their daughter, yeah. What of it? I really do need to speak to your mother. What about? About Celia. It's all right, Mum. At DC Davis, Wilsdon North. I'd like to have a talk with you, if I may, about your daughter. Josie, what's happened? Not me, Mum. Celia. You found her? Uh, no. No, we haven't. Then go and have another look. Go on, bugger off! You'd better come in then, hadn't you? I'll stay, shall I? No. I'll be all right, love. You gotta work. You found something? No, but we're hoping to. Hoping. We're all hoping. That's what people do, innit? Oi. Don't screw her up again.
there's been some new information. Oh, yeah. So we decided to have another look. Did you? All right, it's a long shot. I can't pretend it isn't. She was a good girl, Marcelia. Oh, I'm not saying she didn't have her moods. What kid ain't moody at that age? But she certainly wasn't a... She certainly wasn't what they tried to make her out to be. Besides, kids at that age get influenced by people. All sorts of people. When she went off before, was it with anyone? How do you mean anyone? All right, a man. Boyfriend. No. Oh, I don't know. I didn't ask and she didn't say. She must have given some reason. She said she just wanted a change, that's all. I didn't ask anymore. She was back. And that was enough. Tell me about that day. It was just a normal day. She was home in the morning, doing a bit of housework. She was very good like that. In the afternoon, she went down the employment to see about a job, nursing. Oh, she would have been a credit. Anyway, by the time I got home from work, she'd had her bath and she was getting ready to go to the club, uh, this club she went to. And I said to her, how did it go then? Yeah, all right. Well, come on then, darling, tell me. Oh, I had this interview. I know, that's silly. What did they say? Well, Mum, I'll tell you later when I get back, I oh. promise. Only, she never did get back, did she? All that got back was the clothes she was in. And you're not going to see them, not you, not nobody. How did your husband take it? <laughs> he doesn't show much. Have you spoken to him yet? Uh, not yet, no. No. Yeah. Reading the statements, it seems to me you were closer. I'm a mother. Yes. Your husband knows... knew Jimmy Ramscar. Oh, that sod. You don't like him? Dirty bugger. Hands all over Marcelia and me. He was checked out by the police. So was the Yorkshire Ripper. I'd like to keep these inquiries as quiet as possible, Mrs. Norris, all right? Yeah. Thank you. There have been times I've prayed to God that whoever did it would do it again. Because this time he might make a mistake. This time they might find him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm saying that I've prayed that some other kid might die, some other family might torn apart so that I could find some sort of peace because that's what it does to you that's what you become You checking up on me? It's your job, innit? Checking up on people. Is she all right? Yeah. No. Anyway, you'd know better than I would how all right she is. How about a cup of tea? Fancy chances, do you? I'd like to talk to you about your family, about Celia. I'm working. Some other time, then. Why should I? No reason at all. Do you know the supermarket on the old estate? Yeah. I have my dinner break at half past 12. Tomorrow, then? You'll have to wait and see, won't you?
statement, Burridge David. On the night in question, I met Celia Norris at a local club. I was working part-time at Sasha's nightclub in Neasden. Celia arrived with Roxanne Palmer around 9.30 p.m. Have you seen my stomach pills? Oh, uh, no, Gov. Sorry. Oh, bastard, isn't it? My stomach pills. Well, that's criminal. Fancy a cast of cream instead, Gav. Oh, Gov, I think I might have a lead on Ram's car. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll have one. One of the times you pulled him in, his alibi was that he was at his mother's birthday party. Yeah, I remember. He promised us a bit of cake, so? So that was August the 12th, about a week from now. And you think he's going to turn up for the party this year? Well, he's her only son. He's obviously very close to her. So he should be. She bought him his first set of knuckle dusters. What I mean is, well, ever since he went to Spain, he's flown her out there every year for her birthday. But this year, she's had a hip done and can't travel. And you think that's why he's in the country? Not to do a job, but help his dear old mother blow her candles out? I'm moved. I really am. No, but if he's that sort of son, he's going to make contact, isn't he? One way or another. Right. Good thinking, Dangerous. I'm proud of you. Give us a kiss. How long have you been on your own, Mr. Parsons? Ever since my mother died. I suppose it's a matter of getting some sort of system going. Why won't you ever leave me alone? Why won't you just let me be? I know, mate, I know. But, you know, stealing women's knickers, etc., these things follow you. It's all behind me now. All that's finished. I'm learning to play the saxophone. Don't spoil it. If you just go through it with me, I'll be out of your way. I was having a walk along the canal. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? And I saw this plastic bag, so I thought I'd better have a look. It could be something important. So I looked. And it was full of girls' clothing. You must have thought it was Christmas. You see what I mean? Relentless. That was on the Monday after she went missing. Not that I knew about her, of course. Not until it came out in the paper, the description of what she was wearing. Well, I panicked. I admit it, I panicked. Well, I had unfortunate precedents, didn't I? So as soon as I could, I took it back to where I found it. And the next day, they're knocking on my door again. Some stupid dog found it, and because, because they knew about me, they started on me again. Two days they kept me. If you knew what that did to my poor mother. When you found the bag, was it hidden or what? Not properly, no. Well, otherwise I wouldn't have found it, would I? It was just sort of lying there, like someone had dropped it. All right. Thanks. Is that your instrument? I've got another one upstairs, a tenor. You keep busy then. I've got your number if I need to speak to you. Bye. Sorry to be rude, but goodbye to bad rubbish. That's all. I'll be down in a minute. Member, sir, because I don't recognize you, and I think I should see your card. Quite right. You're an instructor, are you, David? Well, more on the maintenance side of things, really. Celia Norris, Christ, that was years ago. You still remember, though, don't you? Look, I had hours of this when it happened, and they cleared me 100%. Here's how it is. 
We've reopened the case and I've got the job of checking on people who made statements at the time. That's all there is to it. It's nothing heavy, I promise you. Well, what can I tell you? What I'm trying to find out is how people felt about her. Celia. You, for instance. How I felt about her? Nothing. Nothing at all. She was just a kid in the club I was managing. Hello, what are What have you heard? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who says? Who doesn't? Well, why don't you find out for yourself? I've got all I need, thank you. What, well, him? Yeah. Anyway, what about Roxanne? What about Roxanne? You didn't fancy that? If I'd have fancied her, I'd have had her, wouldn't I? Are you saying she was easy? I'm saying I had the touch. Still do when I bother. Why did you take her out in your car that night? She'd had a row with her boyfriend. So you took her for a ride? She was upset. That was very civil of you. I'm like that. You and? Roxanne and Celia, yeah. Roxanne being? Just a jealous little talk. Me? Jealous? Of her? Sit on this. Hello, you two. Oh, bug off. She married a solicitor, Roxanne. Don't ask me how she did it, but she's well sorted. Lives up on the ridge. If he knew what I know, eh? So, you get in your car and you go for a ride. Nowhere special, just ride. Went up the M1. Showing off a bit. I just got it, see? Oh, that car. And you came back and you dropped her off by the cemetery. Yeah, that's right. Why there? Why not take her home? She said she had a bit of a headache. Said she wanted to walk. Leave her. What a pity you couldn't persuade her otherwise. Yeah. Don't think I haven't thought about it. If you had to sum her up in one word, what would it be? Dead. No, that's out of order. One word. Unhappy. Why unhappy? She never seemed to know what she really wanted. And that made her unhappy. Uh, unpredictable. Yeah, that's a better word. Unpredictable. But still just a kid you picked up in the club. Yeah. Yeah. Coming home next week. Oh, right. I'll give my best. Mum's doing a Sunday lunch. She said to ask if you'd like to come along. I said, I didn't think so for two minutes, but she said to ask anyway. Tell her thanks, but, you know. <laughs> well, I had to ask. You know what she's like. Yeah. I mean... No. No. Three! Can I make some constructive criticism? Absolutely. You're bloody rubbish. Judge a man not by what he does, but by what he is. That's what I just said, didn't I? Vanity. All is vanity. And hype. And hype. Yes. Just a minute. I know that horse. I know you. This horse belongs to what's his name? Well, you better tie him up then. I will. You know, I've never been on a horse. And now's your chance, Kim Wasabi. No, I don't think so. 
But on the Channel Tunnel. I gave that horse my last polo. He'd like polo being a horse. Known. I thought I'd take you for lunch. You thought wrong then, didn't you? I'll take you. Do you like being a policeman? Some of it, yeah. I won't mind being in the police. Constable Norris. Sergeant Norris. What's the next one? Inspector. Inspector Norris. Yeah, I'd quite fancy that. I'll bring some brochures. Why aren't you one? What? An inspector or something. I mean, well, let's face it, you're no chicken, are you? No. No, I'm no chicken. So? So, the further you go up, the further you get away from what the job's all about. And that's not why I joined. And what does that mean? It means I'll be stuck in an office not being taken out on a picnic by someone like you. <laughs> Do you know I'd really like to be? What's that? I'd like to be me. I'd like to be someone in my own right. Someone who's wanted for what she is. Not as a replacement for someone else. Because that's what I am. If Celia hadn't have died, I'd never have been born. And sometimes I feel like I'm choking. But that in your knapsack and cart it across Hampstead. You married, are you? I'm the one supposed to be asking the questions. What well, are you? Sort of. What's that mean, sort of? It means I'm nearly not married. Mm. Not another one. Another one, I think so. So what happened? Mind your own. Something went wrong. Something went wrong, then it all went wrong. It's not something I talk about. Do you think I'll be all right? Yeah, I'll be all right. You don't sound very sympathetic. It's part of the game, they enjoy it. There you are, one of the others is going for it. You're quite hard, really, aren't you? Part of your game, I suppose. And I bet you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Probably why you're a copper. Do you fancy me? Do you look at me lying here and get desires? How's that, sir? I'm doing the whip round for Raymond's party. What are we talking about, 20? What number Canfield Avenue are you living at? 27, right. There's a fun and games down there last night. Some comedian tied a blooming great horse to the front door of number 14. Apparently it wandered off from those gypsies. Bloke on patrol tries to arrest it. He near bites his hand off. Nasty. He goes into their bathroom to tidy himself up. This morning we get a bill for redecoration. Some people, eh? Hello there. They got you an order, did they? Sorry? You and your mate down by the canal. Oh, yeah, right, no, I know. Set up a trap, did they? Leslie Block, by the way. I've got nothing against your sort. My uncle was a bit of a Nancy and he was as good as gold. How'd you do? How do you do? No, I, um... What are you here for? I've been accused, would you believe, of nicking produce from the allotment. So you were at it. That allotment's been in my family for years. My grandfather had it, my father had it, and then me. It's my heritage, you understand? I do, yeah. Then I get sick and I can't keep it up. And what happens? Council comes along and takes it off me. All those years of bending my back, no offence, and they give it to some other bloke. My land, my green and pleasant, my... England. The thing is, sorry to have to say this, it doesn't give you the right to bunk over the wall and nick his carrots. 
Oh, I manured that allotment. Right. Yeah. Point taken. We're here about sex, sir, they? What's the only time the week we do it? <laughs> Come on, shove off, shove off. Tell me about Jimmy Ramscar. I've told you. No, no, no. Tell me about him and Celia. Celia? You provided him with an alibi for the day she went missing. What's this got to do with Celia? Well, I was with him at Newmarket. I've been reading the statements. They're very similar, shall we say. Do you honestly think I'd have given him an alibi if I thought for two seconds she was my daughter, for Christ's sake? I said to him, what kind of people are you? For Christ's sake. Oh, what does it matter now, anyway? All right, all right. We put our heads together. Jimmy had this bird he was running, and she was with us that day. Now, if his wife had found out, she'd have skewered his cojones. Simple as that, all right? He was quite a ladies' man, by all accounts. So he liked the ladies. And the ladies liked him. Is that right? He tried it on with your wife? Yeah. She was a good-looking woman. And he fancied every good-looking woman he set eyes on. Including Celia. Her mum chose that name, you know. Some book she read, or play, or something. What do you think? I think if he laid a finger on her, I would have killed him. She left home once before. Did she? Your wife said she never gave a reason. Then she didn't. So you've got no idea? No idea. Because it was nice, that's why, because I liked Some him! Some bloke you'd only just met. What do you know about him? He could have been anybody. For Christ's sake, girl, you're trying to get yourself killed. Look, he didn't touch me, right? Oh, you expect me to believe believe that? what you like, I'm telling you, he didn't touch me. I don't like him touching me. Not one word to your mother, you hear me? Not one word! You're pathetic. It's funny, isn't it? All them years, and the only kid we could manage was our Celia. Couldn't have another one. Wanted one. Wanted as many as come natural, but it weren't to be. So we stopped trying. Stopped sleeping in the same bed. We didn't sleep together again until she went missing. It was obvious she weren't coming back. Down, it was only to comfort each other, have someone to hold. Then one night, God knows why, we did it. And after all them years of trying and getting nowhere, she fell for our Josie. Almost makes you believe, doesn't it? Mr. Lynn, DC Davis, Wilson North CID. Oh, it's all taken care of, thank you. The insurance people said as long as I'd reported it, it was all right. I shouldn't think there's any chance of catching the little blighters. Well, you'd know that more than anyone, wouldn't you? No, it's not about the door, Mr. Lynn. It's about Celia Norris. Celia Norris? Good God. Has something happened then? We're looking into it again. I'm not sure what I can tell you. Tell me about Celia. What was she like? What was she like? Go to try. Where well, to start, isn't it? When it all happened, the newspapers said I was her boyfriend, but it wasn't anything like that, really. I mean, I, I thought she was wonderful. You know, attractive, full of life, full of the joys, I suppose. But I knew in my heart I wasn't the one for her. She was only... Well, let's be honest, she was only using me. How do you mean, using you? Because of my hobby. 
It's a lot more than a hobby. These things. I've been mad about cameras ever since I can remember. You mean she wanted you to take photographs of her? Photographs, video stuff, all sorts. Nothing untoward, nothing like that. But that's what my attraction was. My new G71. And her ideas about becoming a pop star. What are you doing? Trying some new angles. I want to look like she looks. Leave it to me, I promise. And if it's no good, we don't let no one see it, right? You look fantastic. Do you mean it? Fantastic. I think you're great, Billy. I wish. You me, yeah? Yeah. You ready? Ready. We had some really nice evenings together. She was quite different when she was on her own. And she had quite a nice voice. I think she might have done rather well. Who knows, though, eh? Tell me about the night she went missing. You went to the club together. No. As I say, it wasn't really like that. We used to meet there. Then, more often than not, we'd have an Indian or something, and I took her home. But not this night? No. I don't half fancy you, William Lind. Yeah, me and all. You're so sexy. Yeah, really sexy. Do you know, I think tonight could be your lucky night. Why was that? Sorry? Why didn't you take her home that night? Well, I don't know, really. The DJ had asked me to make up a showreel for him. I got carried away like I always do, I suppose. And when I looked for her, they said she'd gone. Someone said you had an argument with her, which is why she went off. Well, I don't know who told you that, but no. Never. Did you have sex with her? We weren't like that. We were just... We weren't like that. Thanks. You've been very helpful. Have I? Maybe. You wouldn't have any of those tapes, would you? I would, yeah. I keep everything. It drives my wife mad. Could I have a look? I'll sort them out, give you a ring. That's all right, I'll pop back. What, a couple of days? Tomorrow, if you like. You won't... Come to the house, though, will you? Not if you don't want me to. I mean, you know. Yeah. I know. You see, I've got a lovely wife and two lovely kids, and all the business with Celia seems like another life. I still think about her. Nearly every day. Funny that, isn't it? According to you... According to witnesses. She was dropped off about here, right? Somewhere about here, right. And she walks along in this direction. And the last time anyone sees her is here. Right. By the gates! Right. Right! So? So where would you say the best place to hide a body is? According to the registry... Just a minute, just a minute. How did you get to see the registry? I told them it was part of my survey. Excuse me, a study of the sexual behaviour and attitudes of local residents over the age of 65? I improvised, didn't oh, I? Yes, you did. I did it for you, Ingrid. Absolutely. Now, the girl went missing on August the 13th. Correct. I checked the number of burials over the next three working days. And? Six. Six? And that was summertime. Must be like Harrods sale in the winter. They're all buried in exactly the same area, over in that corner over there. So, what you've deduced with your untrained but laser-like mind is that somehow the killer gets her in here, dead or alive, and either straight away or as soon as he can, buries her. Correct. In one of the graves that's already been dug. Correct. Puts her at the bottom and covers her up just enough so the body won't be seen. And the other one goes on top of it. Correct. So all I need to do is get six exhumation orders. Or maybe you could pick them off one at a time. What about tools? No, no, no. They do the digging for you. I mean her. How did he, she, they dig her in? With a shovel, I suppose, or their bare hands. We're talking desperate people here. Or a machine like that one. If you have the keys, of course, the driving license. Don't bugger me. I'm only trying to help. Of course you are. And very imaginative it was, too. Come on up, I hope. Horrible places, cemeteries. No life in them. When I go, I want to be planted under a tree in a biodegradable and inexpensive box. With all your worldly goods, does she? No, no, I don't want any fuss. In fact, in fact, I might stipulate that when I'm gone, I'm put out with the bins. What a morbid conversation this is. Why can't we talk about something else? Queen's Park Rangers. 
No, that is morbid. I suppose you'll be wanting a cup of tea. Oh, tough. I knew a couple once. Years ago, he used to say, if you can't get sex, get a cup of tea. No one likes to go away empty handed, I suppose. Well, he certainly didn't. So I'm told. Really? <sighs> Here's to poor little Celia then. She had no life, really, did she? She had so many plans. Mind you, it was a different plan every day, so whether she actually would have made anything of herself. The thing is to have a goal, isn't it? Look at that woman's follow through. Hard to credit that not six months ago she was cut from a car in Stanmore High Street, unconscious for six weeks, not a scratch on her. Life can be very peculiar, can't it? Seems like only yesterday there we were, me and Celia, as close as two squirrels up a plastic pipe. Now she's dead, bless her, and I'm. Well, I'm doing very nicely. Very nicely. And I wouldn't like that niceness disturbed. Tell me about William Lind. Poor little Billy Lind. She only went with him because of his photography. Not that he'd have known that, poor sod. Oh, he was besotted with her. She could have used him for a dishcloth for all he cared. What about the row they had? There's no row. Not a row. I mean, she was in one of her moods, acting up, taking the mickey out of him to see how much he could put up with. Sorry to speak ill and all that, but that is what she was like. So when David Burridge suggested a ride in his new car... Oh, she was all for it, of course she was. So you went for a ride up the M1, the three of you? Is that what I said? I suppose it was. Are you saying it wasn't true? Did I tell a fib? Yeah, I suppose I did. But nothing important, though. Nothing that would have altered anything. So what happened? We went up to Barnet. Hadley Woods, if you follow my meaning. Not quite. He was going to shag us, wasn't he? Was he? Well, what else, for goodness sake? Why didn't you say this at the time? Because he didn't want me to. So you lied? Told a fib. Because David Burridge asked you to. Is this really important? I don't know yet. Because all that's finished. I'm a very happily married woman. You have my word as a police officer. You've got a sense of humour, I'll give you that. She knew why we were going up there. She was putting out all the way. I went first, no argument there. When he started on her, and he had an amazing recovery rate, I can assure you, she wasn't having any of it. So he drove us back. Her sitting in the corner, hunched up, sulking. Get to Clifford Street and silly little bitch jumps out of the car with it still moving. And that's the last I ever saw of her. I feel bad about it, of course I do, but what could I do? Let me get this straight. Are you saying he wanted you to lie to protect his image? The man who could have anyone? Of course I lied for him. I was 18 years old and I was potty about him, silly cow. Oh, hello. I'm wanted for the teas. You'll be discreet, I know you will. You've got a kind face. Uh, just one more thing, sorry. You say he dropped you off at home. Yeah. What, straight after you left Celia? Mm, more or less. That would take how long? Uh, five, ten minutes, no more. Thanks. Thanks. Hope you win.
Someone's nicked all the custard creams. I put it on the computer. Some woman phoned for you. Oh, yeah? Name of Josie. Josie? Just Josie. Did you say what she wanted? Just that she wanted to see you. Uh, be nice to her, eh, Dangerous? We're running out of biscuits. Behave yourself. You left a message? I did, didn't I? Where's your mother? She's gone to see her sister. Well? Uh, I've got something to show you. Stay here a minute, yeah? Why not? What's that? I said, come up here. Why? What's this all about? You're scared. And you're 17. She keeps it all wrapped up in tissue paper. She don't know where it is. Good, isn't it? She calls me a gift from God. A miracle. It's true though, isn't it? Put me and the blessed Celia side by side and who could tell the difference? Stop it! <laughs> we met that poodle. Oh dear. Right. Are you all right? Have you got any of that scotch left? Pack it in, why don't you? Yeah. Find something else. You're not stupid. A little paper shop in Borton on the water, maybe. Why not? Seat you down to the ground. <laughs> Thanks. No responsibilities. Is that what you think? Well, you're not exactly the most ambitious man in the world, are you? Ambition's what it's all about, is it? Well, it depends what you're ambitious for. What about job satisfaction? And what about job satisfaction? Isn't this where we left off? That and everything else. Yeah. Give me ten minutes and I'll try and remember what the everything else was. No, it's not the job. The job's the job. Thing is, I'm working on something. I'm doing something and I'm not sure why I'm doing it. No, it's more than that. I think I'm only doing it for me. I'm not sure I'm not doing more harm than good. I don't really want to talk about it. Never did. I said to my friend Rosemary, I know more about your clitoris than I do my own husband. Yeah. I do miss you, you know. You can stay if you want to. You had a dog in here? 
Don't change the subject. You came back for it, didn't you? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I know you did. Not in here, please. Oh, go on then. Open the window. Yeah, all right. I came back for her. Why didn't you say so before? They didn't ask me, did they? And I wasn't going to volunteer it, was I? It gave me a bad enough time about it as it was. So you dropped Roxanne off and you came back here? Yeah. Why? I felt worried about her, didn't I? I felt worried about her. But by the time I got back, she was gone. I drove round looking for her, but I couldn't see her. So I went home. You dropped her on the corner here? She jumped out on the corner, eh? And she walked back this way towards the gates. Yeah, and we was going that way. You wouldn't walk this way if you wanted to go along by the canal. You'd cross the road and go that way. If that's what you want to do, yeah. Oh, that's where her clothes were found. Yeah, gotcha. Unless, of course, someone changed her mind for her. Well, it wasn't me. No? Listen, do you really think I'd have tried anything with a bloody police van parked round the corner? What police van? There's a police van. Parked over there, down the alley between the garages. <laughs> I might be silly, but I ain't bloody stupid. When you first got here or when you came back? Couldn't see it when we got here. But it was certainly here when I come back. Just parked or someone in it? Couldn't tell you. Have a look in your records. You write everything down in your little books, didn't you? How are you doing? A couple of pointers, nothing much. Jimmy Ramsker. He was a conceited so-and-so. <laughs> Used to dye his hair, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Well, I'm off. Good night. Good night, Raymond. Yes, that's right, sir. How can I be of assistance? A couple of questions I'd like to ask you about the old days. Hang on. I've just got to park this roller. We wrote it all up. I don't see your problem. No problem, just some clarification. Off you go, then. According to your notes, you and PC Fennel came on duty at 10. Did your rounds in the van, no particular incident, blah, blah, blah. Certainly no sighting of the gun. That's what the books say. That's what happened. Except there was a retirement party that night. Sergeant Grant. That's right, Arthur Grant. And according to the newspaper, PC Fennell was there. Freddie Fennell, who was supposed to be in the van with you. Well, Freddie had a drink with him. Of course he did. Best mates. So someone stood in for him. There's nothing terrible in that. Things were different in them days. A bit easier going, you know what I'm saying? What was the van doing parked in the alleyway across from the cemetery? What was it, what? That wasn't in your notes either. Stone the crows. You're coming in a bit, aren't you? I'm one of your own. What do you think, then? I had this... I had this woman I used to see. Tell you the truth, I was potty about her. All sex, of course. Happy days. So, uh, when we was on nights and her old man was away, I used to pop round and see her. Freddie had cover for me. Only for an hour or so, he'd have a kip or something. But if anything happened, he'd be on the bloke to me straight away. So the night this girl goes missing... Listen, don't come the Boy Scout with me, sunshine. You know the game. You know the job. You know these things happen. He 
Anderson. When it turned into a murder inquiry, we had to cover ourselves, didn't we? Well, it's all right in house, but you know what I'm saying. So, he'll be speaking to Freddie, no doubt. Give him my regards. We've lost touch completely. He's got Alzheimer's, can't remember a thing. Bloody Alzheimer's. He was a comical bugger, Freddie. You just don't know what's waiting around the corner, do you? Still, you can give my best to old Ray. I know he's still got his marbles. Ray? Yeah, Ray Yardley. He must be retiring soon. He is, yeah. Terrible life he's had. What with that missus of his? She was a lovely looking woman. And suddenly, well, look, like I say, you just don't know what's waiting around the corner. I think that's why he was only too happy to stand in for Freddie that night. I used to get the feeling that sometimes he just didn't want to go home. You're not going. Take two seconds. Put the postcard. Uh, should we take it? So then, left any droppings, has he? Any footprints in the snow? Oh, Ram's car, sorry. Yeah, who else? No, it was just, um, yeah, things are moving. Flowers, he said his mother went into Flora via a florist in Maribyrn High Street. Gala took the orders away for a couple of days. They'll phone me as soon as she gets back. Okay. See you. See you, sir. See you. It's a good sort of Raymond. I hope things work out for him. Yeah. He kept an eye on me, you know, when I was first stationed here. Who was who, what was what. Don't know why I wasn't interested in CID. It's a good copper. I give you a bad time, don't I? <sighs> I hear this, Joel. What it is, what it's become. Bloody CID run by a clown who's never felt a collar in his life. What sort of way is that? Off the record, right? I do. I hate it. I could have taken it out on someone, haven't I? So, um, nothing personal. You know what I think, Gov? Off the record. Go on. I think you're a bad tempered prick. Nothing personal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aunt Daphne, you've done it again, haven't you? They'll know something's up. I always get a lift with Mr. Fisher after practice, so how am I going to explain? Shut up! Just shut up. Here. This is where you found the clothes. Right here, in some bushes. There used to be a lot of bushes. Well, I put them in a plastic bag. Beg your pardon? If you're going to get rid of the clothes, why put them in a bag first? I'm sorry, I can't help you. Sorry. So, about here? No, exactly here. How do you mean, exactly? Because it was right where the old army building was. Where that greenhouse is now. In the allotments? That's right. In the allotments. When I called you a poor I didn't realise you were a policeman. That's all right. I mean, you must get puffs in the police, same as you do in the armed forces, so good luck to you, mate. Ah, there we are. Oh, 1958. That was the year my granddad was runner-up, runner-beans. As you can see, everything's changed and nothing's changed. And this is the old army building? The old wartime blockhouse used by the own guard. Defending the sprouts against the crowds. Stood there for years, it did. They used it as a storehouse. No one bothered to knock it down until, what, 76? Where is it? Oh. There you go. And this was here in 1982. Mm. Takes up too much space, of course, but wouldn't it be no good for growing because of the room underneath? Room? What used to be the air raid shelter? Would have cost a fortune to have it out, so they just locked it up and left it. As you can see, it's a greenhouse belonging to one of the plot holders, yes. Had it for years. Well, since they pulled the old one down, yeah. Ray Yardley. One of yours, yeah. But no trouble. Keeps himself to himself. Very nice fella. You were here in 1982, weren't you, Raymond? There was this girl who went missing, Celia Norris. Can you remember anything about her? Celia Norris? Hmm. 1982? Blimey, dangerous. What's all this about? CID, DC Davis. Who? Sorry? Yes, thank you for calling. Uh, as I understand it, you took a telephone order for flowers to be sent to Mrs. Ramscar. Right. 
You wouldn't know if he was calling from Spain, would you? From where? James Ramscott. How do you do? DC Davis, Milston North CID. A what job? A face job. Eyes, neck, the lot. But why didn't he have it done in Spain? Because he doesn't trust foreigners. But you said the surgeon's name is Fontachilla. Yes, but he's a British foreigner. So the only reason he's come over here is to get his bloody face lifted. Not for himself, he assures me, for his girlfriend. They're going to, quote, run away together and start a new life. How old is she? Nineteen. Oh, how do they do it, these blokes? She's strongly attracted to older men. She loves the security they offer, but she's got this thing about multiple chins. Only oh, he said, would be mind being discreet about it. On the grounds that he'll have no fury like a middle-aged woman stuck on a tour in Tromolinos. I think that was his concern, yes. After all, she is my wife, he said. I assured him that in today's police service, discretion gets issued along with the riot shields. Well done. I'm impressed. What's the darling coat in Spain? Oi! It's R E T I R E. E! Hello, I'm from the British Social Research Unit, and my supervisor would have rang ahead to arrange an appointment. Right, so just a few qu questions. How's it going? Bloody terrible. What about yourself? Have you solved that murder? I think I have, yes. How'd you do? You can't do that. You're a policeman. That's why I can. A warrant first. So I can't hear. Shouldn't we have a warrant? If it's here, why didn't they find it in the first place? Maybe they didn't look hard enough. Maybe they didn't look at all. Maybe get it took them a week to treat it as a missing person. Let's have this up then. Look how. Let's get serious.
joke. <laughs> yeah. Ah, there you are, Danger. Hey. Just in time for the speeches. Where's Raymond? I don't know. He was here a minute ago. All right. Fine. Practicing my speech. And I have to tell you, I am dreading it. Here. Come to get me, have you? No, oh, well, I've got to face the music sooner or later. Yes. What? I saw her get out of the car. It was obvious they'd had some sort of argument. She walked along and then sort of crouched down by the gates, the cemetery gates. She was obviously upset. I got out of the van and called across to her. Are you all right, love? You all right, love? I'm a police officer, are you? Call them all right, bugger off! I wasn't looking for trouble, so I went back to the van. I, I could keep an eye on her from there anyway. And then she came over to me. Sorry if I was rude. That's all right, love. I was upset. Yeah, I could see. You're all right now, though. I couldn't sit down for a bit, could I? I should have known. I should have known. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, of course you can. Just until I can, you know, get my head together. just sort of sat there. She kept looking at me and smiling but not saying anything. I tried to make conversation but she just answered yes or no and smiled that smile of hers. She had this smile. Is your friend back again? We saw the car coming back and I asked her if she wanted me to flag him down, but she said, I never want I never to speak, speak to him again. again. Thank you. You've been really nice. You should get yourself home. You can give me a lift, would you? I must have been mad. I must have been bloody mad. Yes. Yeah, all right. So long as you behave yourself. I'll show you the way I go, shall I? I kept telling myself that Steve Pierce would be back within the hour and I'd have to be there waiting for him. So what could happen? Nothing, nothing. And all this time we're talking. You know, that sort of talk. The sort I hadn't talked with a woman in years. She was 17 years old. You didn't know her. You didn't know her. You would be like that, would you? Like what? Like him. Don't know what he's like. You do? Bit of a groper, is he? Groper? Is that what you call him? What do you call him? I know what I call him. Find someone else. I'm not his property anyway. Someone who will look after you. Like who, for instance? Whoever you fancy, you shouldn't have any trouble. Sexy little thing like you. You think I'm sexy? Don't you? Depends. And then... Oh, God, oh, God. How about a little kiss? What for? For me. You're a policeman. <laughs> so I am. <laughs> I 
I've never kissed a policeman. Nor have I. Listen to you. Well? All right. No, I'll kiss you. I suppose because it had been so long, I got a bit rough or something because suddenly everything's changed and she's pulling away from me like she's disgusted. And she's getting out of the car just like she did before. She's running away and she's screaming. And I'm terrified that a security bloke or someone is going to hear. Stay away from me! And I catch her up and the look on her face. You bastard, don't you mind it, old bastard, I'm going to report you! I'm going to make you suffer. I'm going to make you suffer! And she starts screaming again and running away. And all I want to do is to make her quiet, to calm her down, but she won't. She goes on and on like... Like I'm everyone she'd ever hated. And then, and then, and then she was lying there. I stood there just looking at her. And I made sure she was dead. Then I set about hiding her. That's something you find out, you don't think straight, your mind goes haywire. I knew I had to do it fast because of Steve Pierce. I took her to the only place I could think of. All that night I kept thinking, someone must have seen me must have seen something. I'll get the call and... but nothing. She wasn't even reported missing. Nothing. But I knew sooner or later they'd start looking and if they found her, they'd find me. I went back and took all her clothes off her to make it harder if they ever did find her. And hid her properly. All I could think was that if I could get it over the wall, I could pick it up later. When I went back to pick it up, it had gone. I, I thought I was gonna go mad. I found out later that that bloke Parsons had found it and then when it was in the newspaper, had put it back. They started a proper search. I didn't look in my place. I was one of their own. Is that it? I didn't mean to kill her. How many coppers have heard that, eh, Raymond? What would have happened to my wife? What would have happened if I'd gone inside? What would happen to her now? I'm all she's got. I didn't mean to kill her. What good would it do now? What difference will it make? Do you think I've got away scot-free? I've had 20 years knowing what I did. Her family's had 20 years of not knowing. You tell me what you think is worse. You smug bastard! What do you know about family? Don't make me turn you in, Raymond. Do what you should have done 20 years ago. And then his wife says, How did I know you did? All right, all right, thank you very much. If the guest of honour doesn't turn up very soon, and where he is, I haven't the faintest idea. You're going to be hearing a lot more. Oh, and here he is now. Thank you, thank you. We're gathered here today to pay special tribute to Celia Norris, who died just 17 years old, 20 years ago. Our thoughts and prayers 
are with her family at this difficult time. The love of God will always be with her. She was a wonderful girl. We will never forget her. Who can you trust? Quite the detective. I'm not overjoyed, Gov. Proved how clever you are, though, eh, Dangerous? If I'd have... That's what I told the man upstairs. He kept us in the dark because he wanted to prove himself, I said. Why would he need to do that, he said. Because, dear old-fashioned chap that he is, he feels I'd done by, I said. Feels i pass him over. Gov. Shut up! You've made me look very silly, and funnily enough, I don't like it. So I suggest you put him for a transfer. I'm all right where I am. Good. Because I'd only tear it up anyway. I want you here, Dangerous. Unless you want to hand your cards in. I don't think so. Pass you over. I haven't even begun. The last detective, that's what you are, Dangerous. The last detective I'll ever think of. Unless it's the crap jobs. Then you'll be the first. All right. Yeah, all right. You? Yeah. All right. How's the job going? Ah, oh, I'm having a few teething problems. Yeah. I don't seem to be getting off on the right foot with some of my clients. I know the feeling. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you might give me a bit of help. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The thing is, my head of the department said it'd be useful to start each interview with a joke. To break the ice. And you want to practice on me? Correct. Go on, then. I really fancy a good joke. Right, there's two goldfish in a bowl. One goldfish turns to the other one and says, Can you drive this thing? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's very good. Thank you. Can I make a tiny suggestion? Far away. Might be better if you said tank. I said tank? No, you said bowl. Tank, tank. Have you got another one, just in case? Actually, I do. This one concerns the, a professor of psychology and a talking penguin. So it's just a ticket. Off you go, then. Right, so the penguin goes in to see the doctor. He's giving it all the flapping all over the desk. You know, you can get, get off that and he's pushing it about, you know. And he's giving a, you know, phew, I don't know what will happen. What's the punchline? We all have a game of golf. Oh, right, sorry. Yeah, sorry. 